Concerns are being raised that thousands of acres of productive Lincolnshire farmland is being sacrificed in the name of green energy. There are at least eight proposals for very large solar farms in the county. The latest one near to Gainsborough will cover about 17 square miles. Solar energy companies say the multi-million pound farms not only offer clean renewable energy but can enhance local communities. Our environment correspondent Paul Murphy has this report. The prize is secure green energy for tens of thousands of homes but at what cost? Yeah well that's the A631. They're going to for Martin Caswell it could mean the end of a family farm that's been working the land here at Springthorpe for four generations. They're wanting to take about three quarters of our farm and cover it with solar panels but most of the land around here is good wheat growing land which could produce enough wheat every year to, to make 15 million loaves of bread which will feed everybody in Hull for a year. There are several big solar farms proposed for Lincolnshire. Springwell between Lincoln and Sleaford, the Tilbridge project between Gainsborough and Lincoln and nearby Gate Burton solar farm. Not far from that the Cotton project there's Heckington Fen and Mallard Pass to the south of the county. Solar Energy UK, the industry body representing many of the companies wanting to invest in Lincolnshire, said in addition to clean energy produced, solar could enhance both communities and the environment. Solar farms, it said, are affordable, reliable, and it's easy to return the land to agriculture. But farmers say the cumulative impact of solar farms will affect Lincolnshire's ability to feed the UK. We need to grow more food, not less. So why are we taking perfectly good agricultural land, the breadbasket of England, when we could put in these solar panels, for instance, on the top on the roofs of flat roofs of factories? On the UK's energy tracker this morning, solar, seen in yellow, was providing 11% of our power and the government believes it has a big role to play in our energy security. But for James, who was hoping to take over farming here from his dad, there's only a sense of helplessness. He's taken out my hands, it's something I don't have any uh, control over. You know, it, it's uh, <laughs> between the electric companies and, and, and the government sort out between themselves and uh, everybody else can voice an opinion, but what else can you do? Planning permission for large-scale solar is decided in Whitehall, not locally. Developers also have the powers of compulsory purchase. Food producing or not, these large flat fields are likely to continue to catch the eye of the solar industry. Paul Murphy, BBC Look North, Gainsborough. As I say, have your say on this one in uh, just a moment, the subject of uh, solar farms. Uh, earlier I spoke to Chris Hewitt, who is the chief executive of Solar Energy UK. They represent hundreds of solar energy companies. So, Mr Hewitt, for, for people watching in Lincolnshire who will say these solar farms, they will blight the countryside, they will lose acres of productive farmland, what do you say to those people tonight? The greatest threat to our food security and our farmland is climate change. Um, according to government figures, we could lose up to 75% of our productive land if climate change um, carries on as it does to 2050. But we're losing acres of farmland at the moment just to get the power that you would get from one you know, turbine that was out in the North Sea. Is that good use of our land? We need a diverse um, set of renewables. Um, you can't just do it from one technology. And uh, actually the proportion of land we would need for, from the UK to deliver the net zero targets would be less than half a percent of the total, which is actually less than we use for golf courses at the but moment. You, we're never going to be able to rely on solar farms, though. They're, they're, they're almost a, a backup, aren't they? They're a, they're a nice to have. But, you know, if the sun goes in, then they're no good. Uh, it's, it's daylight that, that, that powers the solar farm, so uh, about 5% of our power already comes from solar in the UK. If we double that in the next three years, which we think it will do, then, then we're looking at 10%. We're looking at probably sort of 20% long term. We just heard from a farmer who says, you know, he's got good wheat producing land. If they take that from him, this land would have produced enough bread for a city like Hull every day for a year. Can we really afford to lose that? As I said, there's enough land for integrating solar and integrating agriculture. Um, the other thing which um, a solar farm delivers is 
is nature recovery. So we will, uh, the, the, the 10,000 hectares, which I know are being talked about in some areas, will also be, be wildflowers, it'll be um, pollinators, bird species, and that actually increases agriculture. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you say, right. your body says they, uh, they, solar farms enhance a community landscape and, and area. How exactly do they do that? Many people would say they're a blot on the landscape. If you look at actually how a solar farm is built, um, it's raised off the ground. Um, there's no pesticides, no fertilizers added, which you would see obviously with traditional agriculture at the moment. And essentially, those 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 grasslands are left to turn into meadows, which enhances wildflowers, enhances. We've seen bee populations increase hugely, okay. in, in the other insects, birds, etc., and that actually increases the productivity of the land long term. Well, people will uh, will make up their own mind. Just final question: Should the final say rest with the local community, whether they want it on the doorstep rather than Whitehall? I suppose it's a yes no, really. I'd say that if you look at the. Uh, opinion polling, uh, solar and renewables are very, very popular. So for larger projects, I think it's fair that that should be decided at a national level. Of course, local communities are involved and all good solar developers will speak to all the local communities and, and try to en enhance the landscape and ensure that it's, okay. it's embedded into their communities as best as possible. Mr Hewitt, good to talk to you tonight. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, thank you. Very quick off the mark is uh, Gary who says, uh, why do people object so much to solar farms? They'll be needed in the future and if set up sensitively, the surrounding area can be landscaped and the panels hidden from view. Yes, land is at a premium for agriculture and housing, but there should also be room for solar uh, farms. Uh, Gary, thank you for uh, that. What do you think about this one? Should the countryside be used to grow food or do you think that we need to uh, put in more uh, solar farms? You've heard about the plans from uh, Paul there for the... Uh, uh, farms in Lincolnshire. Here's how to get in touch. The email address is there. Look north at bbc.co.uk. Text number 81333 three, in favour of solar farms. Uh, if so, why or against, uh, let me know or follow me on Twitter and uh, tweet now. We'll have some uh, later in the programme.